Hello, dear. Now, today we are talking about printers. As we all know, printers are output devices for computer system. So we want to discuss the features, characteristics, and other uh, points related to the printer. So before then, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, click subscribe and like the video. You can also share so that uh, we can, we can notify you when we post another video. All right, so let's go into the details of printers. Now, first of all, we want to talk about the different types of printer, printers that we have. We have the inkjet printer, inkjet printer, as you can see here. And we have the laser printer, they call laser jets, laser jet printer. So this uh, laser jet printer, is the commonest one that we have around here. We also have the impact printer, impact printer. Then we have the 3D printer, the 3D printer, which is actually a different uh, equipment, different device. It's not a printer that prints a hard copy of a typed of text uh, uh, work on the system. It does something different. Then we have the thermal printer, the thermal printer. Now let's look at the some of the characteristics and capabilities. When you want to talk about the capabilities of the computer of the printers, you talk about the speed and quality. The speed refers to how many pages per minute that the printer can produce. So that tells you how fast the printer is. Then we talked about the quality. The quality is measured in dots per inch. That is DPI. Uh, so the two, the two uh, features here, the speed, which is in PPM and quality in DPI, that's what we can use to actually qualify uh, a printer. Then we have the color. We have those that can print color, the cyan color, magenta and yellow, CMY, and those that are generally printed black and white. And that is the base color for most of the printers, just black and white, all right? Now, apart from those that, those uh, features, we also talk about the reliability and total cost of ownership of a printer. When you purchase a printer, we talk about the warranty. The warranty covers uh, the device that you purchase for a particular period of time, sometimes one year, two years, and within one or those, or two, or, or those two years, you can actually uh, rest assured that uh, the device will continue to work without breaking down. But if it breaks down, you mm, can return it to the uh, the marketer or the producer so that they can either repair it or give you another one. That is warranty. Then we have scheduled servicing. That is how often you, you, you service your printer. Then we have mean time be between failure. Mean time between failure means when you are using the device, if you're using your printer, as, as, at some point it stops working. Then when it stops working due to one reason or the other, you carry out small maintenance, you fix that problem, then you continue to use it. Then again, after some time again, uh, it stops working again. So then you look out for what happened again, carry out some repair and maintenance and you get it running again. So the time between all these uh, you know, shutdown periods when the device breaks down is the, the, the average value of this time is called the mean time between failures, MTBF. Uh, apart from MTBF, we also talk about total cost of ownership. Total cost of ownership include the cost of purchase, that is the initial price at which you purchase the printer, then cost of consumables and supplies. For instance, you purchase toners or ink uh, and so forth, paper and, and things like that that you use to maintain the printer. So those costs are regarded as cost of consumables. consumables. Then price per page, that is how much does it cost to print one page on average. When you look at average of what you are using, you can talk about price per page. The toner, the electricity, the uh, maintenance costs, the hinge and so on. The average cost you know, that you spend on printing. So we can take average per page. That is a price per page. Then pages per month. How many pages can the device or can the, the printer print in a month? 
So that's another uh, another factor. Then maintenance costs. How much does it cost to maintain it when it breaks down, when you change on parts, when you repair, how much does it cost? It's part of the uh, cost of ownership also. Then warranty costs. That's a, that one depends on the warranty that was agreed on from the time it was purchased new. So all these are part of the total cost. And these are the things we use to, these are the factors we use to talk about the reliability and the cost of ownership of a printer. Now we have another feature of uh, some uh, printers. Uh, some of the laser jet printers you have around have this uh, feature whereby the, the device can actually carry out automatic document feeder. So from top, the paper can automatically be uh, you know, taken in. Some, the, the work that we are going to work on can be placed on top and the printer that also has a probably a photocopier you take in the pages and scan them one after the other. You can, you can actually also arrange the, the pages, feed paper into the machine, arrange the pages, collate them, order the pages, and so on and so forth. So this is another feature uh, common with uh, laser jet and inkjet uh, printers. Now, let's look at the comparison of printers and see the properties of each of the printer. First of all, we are talking about the inkjet printer. The inkjet printer is an easy to use printer. It's easy to use, not nothing complicated in the use, and it's cheaper than uh, laser jet printers. Uh, it's cheaper than laser jet printers. Now the advantages is that uh, it has low cost. That is what we said. We said it's cheaper than laser jets, low cost. Then uh, it produces a high resolution. The print is in high resolution, but it has the following disadvantages. Uh, it uses nozzles where when it's printing and those nozzles, they're prone to clog, they are prone to clog. And that is a disadvantage, that's a demerit. Then cartridges can be expensive. Yeah. Cartridges can be expensive. Cartridges can be expensive. Uh, so, so the cartridges can be expensive to replace. And apart from that, uh, after printing a page, the page is uh, usually wet. It's not dry print like that. So you avoid touching the, the, the printed page uh, just after collecting it from the printer. You allow it to stay like that for some time and dry. Otherwise, if you touch the printed page, you can actually wipe uh, the printed page off by your hand. So that's a disadvantage of a uh, inkjet uh, printer. Now, these are some of the parts of the inkjet uh, printer. We have these various parts. Uh, we have the ruler. You can see the photo here where we have rulers that are moving in our uh, papers. We have the carriage and bed here. The carriage and bed. We have the print edge. We have the print edge here. Also, we have the duplexing assembly. The duplexing assembly. We have the feeder, we have the feeder here, then we have the ink cartridge and then the paper. This is ink cartridge here yeah, that have uh, different colors. Uh, the printer will mix up to form uh, various uh, colors on the printed page. Then we have the paper, we have the paper. So these are some of the uh, features of the, uh, the laser, uh, the ink yet uh, printer. Now let's look at the laser jet uh, printer. Let's look at the laser jet printer. The laser jet printer characteristics. We have uh, this big uh, laser jet printer on the screen. Uh, it has uh, several advantages. But generally speaking, laser jet printers have uh, several advantages. One is that uh, they produce low cost per page. That is the cost of printing uh, pages Overall, is low. Then many of them have high PPM. That is, they are fast in operation. They can produce so many pages per minute. So then high capacity. High capacity goes to uh, to tell you how much uh, uh, pages it can, can be printed probably in a week or in a month. That shows the capacity. Uh, the bigger ones have a higher capacity that can produce thousands of pages 
in a month, in a smaller one, I uh, have limited, limited capacities. You cannot use them to produce so much, uh, uh, too much uh, number of pages, otherwise they will break down. Then one big advantage over the inkjet printer is that the laser jet printer produces dry prints. The paper comes out and uh, you can hold the pages, you can touch the pages, it can, you cannot wipe anything out because it's dry. It's already finer prints as it comes out. But well, these advantages could be the high initial cost. It's more expensive to buy a laser jet printer than to buy an inkjet uh, printer. Then toner cartridges can be expensive. Toner cartridges can be expensive. That's another one. So it uses toner and the toner cartridges can actually be very expensive. Okay. Now let's talk about the parts of the, the laser jet printer. We have the imaging drum, the green part here, that is the drum that actually collects the image and, you know, after which uh, the toner will be used to uh, fuse the image of what is to be printed on the paper. Now we also have the transfer ruler. Transfer ruler use, uh, is used to, you know, transfer the, the toner to the, to the imaging drum to actually print onto the paper. We have the pickup rollers. Pickup rollers are used to pick the paper inside. We have the toner cartridge. That is where toner is stored. And then it is being used from there, from the transfer roller, picking it, picking it to the drum, you know, so on and so forth. We have the fuser assembly. Fuser assembly is here. And then the deplexing assembly. Deplexing assembly. So these are various parts of the laser printer. Now, Apart from that, we we have uh, the the process of operation of the laser jet printer. How it works? There are seven steps in the printing, the printing operation of the laser jet printer. The first step is processing. When you uh, click print, the printer collects the data you want to print from the computer and processes it into a printable form. That is the processing uh, stage. Then charging, charging at that point, drum is conditioned for new image. The drum is set to be ready to collect the image of what you are going to print. Then exposing, the exposing is its point or the, the point when the image of what you are printing is uh, transferred to the drum using a laser beam. The laser beam is a, an electronic light that actually you know, forms image of what you are printing and take it to the drum, then developing. At the point of developing, toner is applied to the image on the drum. The image that has been developed on the drum, then you apply the toner to form the image so that that image, the toner that has been formed can be transferred to the paper. Then transferring. Transferring, as the paper rolls through, that image formed you know, with toner is being transferred to the paper. Now, at that time, the, uh, the, the charge is applied to the paper so that you can have something like negative and positive. The toner will be like positive, the paper is like negative. And so they attract each other together and they go to step six, fusing. Heat and pressure is now applied so that the toner and paper are now fused together as they attract each other. So that the toner will not just you know, be blown away when the paper comes out. There is fusing whereby electrical heat is applied. Heat is generated and pressure to fuse the two together and then become one. Then cleaning, the excess toner that uh, remains after that operation is removed and taken back uh, you know, to the toner cartridge where it is being stored. So this is a process, you can see it. You can see it on the image here, the processing. That is how uh, the laser jet printer works. The charging, the exposing through laser lights, the developing whereby toner is being taken to the drum. The paper rolling in, and then as rolling in, they are transferring the image uh, toner has been transferred to the paper. And then at this point, uh, the fusing takes place after that. So that's that image that uh, has been developed with toner, you know, is transferred and fused to the paper using the uh, heat and pressure. So that is that. Then we are moving on to the thermal printer characteristics. Thermal printers are usually used uh, at retail uh, shops, supermarkets, you know, cash register system, or within other fax machines. It's a small printer that prints a small paper 
for like a cash receipt. It from the print head makes the image on the paper. Then uh, they don't print a large volume of uh, text, just small, small, you know, text like receipts in the in the supermarkets. The, the printer has the advantages that it can last a long time because it has few moving parts. It has few moving parts. And when it's working, it's quiet. It doesn't make uh, much noise. There's no no, uh, no no cost spent on uh, uh, ink or toner. There's nothing like that. But uh, it has a, uh, these disadvantages. The printing, the printing paper that is used, the thermal paper, is expensive. And then it must be stored at room temperature. If not, the paper will degrade and it will not produce good job. If you don't store it at room temperature, if it is a little bit cold, colder than uh, uh, what is required, the paper will degrade and you get a bad job printed. Then images on thermal paper degrade over time. So even after you have printed it and it was fine, after a long, after a long period of time, the images on the paper degrade and then they become poor quality. And then you can all uh, get a color print from a, a thermal printer. The print is not in color. So that's a disadvantage of the uh, thermal printer. Now, apart from that, we also want to talk about the uh, impact printer. The impact printer uh, uses uh, what we call dot matrix and daisy wheel. Dot matrix and daisy wheel. The print head have uh, some uh, uh, metals that are hitting you know, a ribbon to make a uh, print. Print edge, it's like uh, some uh, metallic paints are eating that are eating a ribbon to make a print, and then when the the printer has a higher number of pay, of paints, it can produce a better quality of prints. Now the advantage is the advantage is that uh, uh, the ribbons used in printing are less expensive supplies than uh, other types of a uh, uh, printer that use toner, ink, and so on. Ink, ink cartridge toner and so on. So ribbons are less expensive. Then the printer can use regular paper or use continuous feed paper. It's either you use regular paper or use continuous feed paper. Then you can print in carbon copies. You can print two copies at the same time. It uh, can work uh, similarly to the uh, traditional typewriter whereby you can put carbon paper in the typing page. And as you type one, you get a carbon copy at the back. So the, the uh, impact printer can work in that manner, can give you a, a carbon copy. Whereas laser jet and uh, hinge jet printers, you have to print another copy. The machine has to roll out another copy, taking the same process of the first one. Okay. Now the disadvantages of an impact printer is that it's noisy. When it's printing, you hear a lot of noise. Be hearing the noise, you hearing the noise, that shows uh, uh, the, uh, the printer is at work, it's, it's printing. Then the graphics on the page or the printer page are low quality, low resolution. They are not like a uh, sharp, like we have in laser jet printer and the uh, ink jet printer. Then the printer generally has a uh, limited color capabilities, cannot print a, a wide range of color in the final job. So that's a disadvantage as well. All right. Now let's look at uh, virtual printers. Virtual printers are printers that are, are not really uh, hardware printers, but they are kind of software built into the computer system to produce a uh, different uh, different um, versions of a file. For instance, we have uh, the print to file, print to PDF, print to XPX, that's X XML, and then print to image such as APG and CIF. So these features are in the computer, in the Windows operating system, whereby you can convert a, a, a typed page into different formats, such as PDF. The PDF is the commonest one that almost everybody knows. You can convert to PDF by using a virtual printer, a virtual printer, the PDF a, a printer. Uh, the capability is uh, incorporated into uh, Microsoft Word, some versions. And then if you don't have in your version, you can actually install a small software downloaded from the internet to do a, a conversion from your Word file to PDF. 
So that software software is like a printer, a data printer that you are installing into a system. Now we also have a cloud computing, uh, cloud printing rather. Cloud printing gives you the opportunity to send a print job to a remote printer somewhere in the network, somewhere in the network, uh, so that uh, wherever you are, when your printer is connected to the cloud, you can print from anywhere. Uh, some printing companies have software like this that can uh, print jobs to their closest location. They use the cloud to achieve that. We have Google Cloud Prints that allows someone to connect his own printer to the web. And wherever you go into the world, you connect to the, to the web, and then you print to that printer via the internet. So that is a cloud printing. No matter where you are located, you can print using the cloud. Then 3D printer. 3D printer, as I said earlier, is not really a printer that print, uh, that prints uh, hard copy pages of paper, no. But it's a device, an electromechanical device that develops objects, that builds objects in three dimension. That's why they call it 3D printer. 3D means three-dimensional. Three-dimensional, that is, we have the length, breadth, and height. That is structure of a, uh, optics. So this uh, printer uses a uh, special software under the uh, uh, influence of a computer system to develop an object. For instance, a cup on your table, a 3D printer can actually build it for you and produce a cup. It uses plastic filament and other type of materials to create the objects. That's uh, what a 3D printer does. So we look at the parts of the 3D printer. We have the filaments. The filaments here, they are like a wire rolled onto rollers. And that is what the machine will be taking in. We melt it and use it to build an object, a device, you know, a small object or a big object, depending on the capacity of the 3D printer. We have the feeder here. That's where the filament is going in. We have the axis. The axis is where the machine moves left, right, you know, as it's moving. There is building maybe in another axis, you know, height, the Z the axis. Then we have the hot end nozzle, the nozzle that actually melts the filaments to build the objects. Then the print hot bed, the hot bed whereby the, the device is uh, producing the objects with molten material to develop, you know, build the structure that has been developed on the computer. The object is developed through special software on the computer system and transferred to the uh, 3D printer. The 3D printer takes it in and then uses it to build the object that you actually designed. Now we are talking, we are going to talk about uh, installing and configuring printers. To install a printer, you must follow manufacturer's instruction when you have a new printer. The printer is connected to the system. Then you remove all the packing materials, some nylon, some tapes that are, you know, used to pack it, then you remove them. Sometimes the printer driver is already installed on your computer system. Uh, most of the uh, new printers, we have their drivers installed on the, uh, the computer because they have been embedded into the operating system. For instance, if you are using Windows 10, most of the new printers have their driver embedded into the operating system and also some other uh, manufacturers, different manufacturers, they will collaborate with the uh, software developer, Microsoft, and some other software developer, they give them the driver, they build it into the operating system. So once you connect the printer to the system that has that, you don't have to do anything. The computer system will look for the driver and install it by itself. So what you need to do is just connect the cable and power the printer. Immediately the computer sees the printer, it installs the driver by itself. You don't have to do anything, then it's ready to use. That is a uh, uh, automatic installation of the uh, of the driver by the computers, by the operating system. Now, if your, so your system doesn't have the driver, you need to actually install the driver probably from the manufacturer website or through uh, a CD that was supplied with the printer, install the driver so that the system can actually utilize it to operate the printer. Now to test the uh, printer functions, you can test the functions by uh, checking double-sided documents. If you can uh, print double-sided documents, uh, you can print from different paper trays. Printers, some printer, printers come from uh, 
with uh, different paper trays. And then the function of grayscale and color to pre print in grayscale, that is black and white and color prints. Then draft mode and collation. So we can check uh, different uh, functionalities like this on the, the, on, the on the computer or the, the different features that your printers uh, have. And check that and then use them on the computer and, and test the printer to do such. Now, apart from the, the printer functions, uh, we also talk about common uh, configuration settings. We have uh, in the screen here different uh, configuration settings of the printer. We have the paper type, the print quality, color printing, black and white printing, grayscale, paper size, paper orientation, print layout, duplex, collate. These are different uh, configuration settings of the printer that you can actually select. Actually, I'm going to print a job from the printer uh, or the printer using the computer system. So all these selections will be carried out on the computer as the printer is connected to the computer. We have different settings that you need to choose whether you want to print a landscape or portrait, you want to print a normal, you want to print a banner, booklet, poster, two-sided printing, and so on and so forth. Now, there are the various settings that you, you, know, you set on the computer as you are about to print the, the job. Then, uh, if you have color printer, you must also check, can you print in color? In different size of paper, you can check a uh, paper selection, paper weights, output pass selection, input paper tree selection, and so on and so forth. You can check that on the computer before you print uh, a job the computer. <laughs> Next is a software optimization. Now we talk about a uh, printing, portraits, landscape. Uh, you can select this. Uh, a portrait looks like a uh, a vertical, a vertical page, whereas landscape is like a, you turn the page uh, in a horizontal manner. Then the print software on the computer that has been stored in the driver help you to select all of these. You can configure the principal settings, calibrate the printer, whether to use color or not, and then the, the level of the color, you know, the, the way you want it. Can use the driver to select that. Then you set paper orientation, whether it's a portrait or landscape. You select all of that. Now let's look at the hardware optimization. Uh, there is a firmware that has been uh, built into the printer. And look at the screen here. We have the hardware that contains the chips inside which the firmware is uh, actually stored. It's saved in the, in the printer memory. This is the printer memory we are looking at on the screen. So the firmware is there. That is uh, what guides the computer operation, uh, the printer operation as it's printing. As you send the job into the printer to print, so it goes to the memory where by to the process, and then the printer will begin to work on it. That is a hard way. Now sharing printers. So you can configure printer sharing on your computer system. Uh, that's to, that is to determine how many people can connect to a particular printer, especially when it's on a network. Can decide that a, a printer, a network printer on the network can be shared by everybody on the network. That is printer sharing. You can use a Windows software to do that. And then Windows uh, can actually do it automatically as well. Yeah. Windows can do it automatically. The software can do it automatically. Apart from that, we talk also about a wireless printers. Wireless printers can print via Bluetooth or Wi Fi. So the pairing between computer and printing, uh, printer, the pairing between computer and printer is carried out via uh, through Wi-Fi or through uh, uh, Bluetooth uh, uh, signal. You can use Bluetooth to connect between the printer and the computer. So that is if the printer has wireless capability, the printer that has wireless capability will be able to do that. That uh, has a uh, ability to receive and transmit signal uh, through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Then uh, we talk about uh, Purpose of print servers. Print servers on the on the network provide client access to print resources. Provide uh, access to print resources so that uh, various people on the network can actually use uh, these resources on the network uh, printer uh, that is uh, connected to the network to the server. Then uh, you can use it to administrate uh, print jobs by storing them in a queue. 
the print server administrates jobs by you know keeping them in a queue. And several people on the network are sending job to be printed. And then they queue up and it sees the print server that you know take care of that. It takes care of the, how they are you know attended to on the print server on the on the printer. Then you can also provide user feedback to those using uh, the printer. Software printers soft use a print server software. Yeah, the software printers uh, use print server software. And then these are uh, these ones have certain disadvantages. The advantage is that uh, sharing a printer might cause slowdowns. That is uh, when a lot of people are printing on the same printer, and then there will be you know uh queue, there will be slowdown. People will not get their job done fast enough, like uh, if you are using your own printer. Then apart from that, if the uh, computer sharing the printer is done, then the printer is unavailable. That is the computer that is used to configure that printer to make it available to the network, that shared it to the network. Once the computer that, that it was used to do that is done, then the job that has been sent from various computers to that particular printer cannot be get done. So it means once the computer is done, the printer is done. The printer is out of the network. That's a disadvantage. Okay. Now, hardware print servers. Hardware print servers. We have uh, a router in the middle here. And then the router is used to connect several devices, laptop window, laptop, uh, window PC. We have Mac or a PC. We have a, a printer connected via a print server to the router. We have Apple iPad connected wirelessly. We have Android phone connected, connected wirelessly to the same uh, router. Now, all these are, are linked together by hardware, you know, to form a print server, you know, to form print server so that all of them can print through the, the printer on that network via the print server. But uh, this is uh, uh, connected as in a local area network, as in a local area network. So all the devices, we have one, two, three, four, five, five devices, you know, hand devices can actually be used to print to the print, uh, printer uh, through the print server that, that was connected to the router. So every, every one of them is linked to the router. So then from the router, it can be passed to the print server to the printer. Dedicated print servers. We have a, for dedicated print servers, we have powerful processors in the, in the device. Then it has a very large storage space for queued documents, then adequate memory. These are the features of a dedicated uh, print server. So it's dedicated uh, for the job of printing. And so it is optimized to carry out uh, uh, these tasks that can be, you know, that can be, you know, complex. So as complex as it can be, the, the device has been optimized to be able to produce a such functionality. Now, maintenance and troubleshooting of printers. Maintenance and troubleshooting of printers. Now, preventive maintenance uh, of uh, printers. One, you need to follow the uh, vendor guidelines instruction in the manual, how to carry out maintenance. You have to refer to the printer documentation, follow the recommended maintenance procedures and instructions, and the type to do maintenance that is as been specified, it has to be followed. Now some manufacturers also sell uh, maintenance kits that you use to carry out the maintenance of the printer. So you can actually obtain that also. And these are various parts that you can uh, maintain. In the rulers, you know, the, the cartridges, the rulers, fuser assembly, and things like that. So dirt can accumulate on several parts. You can actually remove dirt to get them working properly, especially the rulers. The rulers can actually accumulate dirt, and then they may they can also wear out from time or become weak, and then they not uh, uh, work well. The paper ruler, the uh, paper picker cannot. Uh, work well when it uh, has become a, a very weak or probably when it's very dirty, when it's very dirty. Now let's talk about uh, 
the uh, perform, uh, uh, preventive maintenance on thermal printer. We want to talk about preventive maintenance on thermal printer. One, you need to look at the uh, printer documentation. What can be replaced? Paper in the thermal printer can be replaced. You can replace the paper. You can clean the eating elements with a cutting swab, dampening as a propyl alcohol. As a propyl alcohol, sometimes some, uh, some people use a uh, spirit. You know, so just you need to use a, a you know a solution that is not a uh, very harsh that will not affect the printer parts. Apart from that, you can use compressed air to remove dust or, or uh, some accumulation of particles inside the printer. Or you can use a clean, you know, lint, lint free uh, clothes, lint free, not a link, lint, lint free, lint free clothes to remove debris from the inside of the printer. Apart from this, preventive maintenance also can be carried out uh, according to the uh, manufacturer's uh, uh, lay down instruction in the documentation. You can replace ribbon for, for the impact printer. You can check the character quality. If the quality has become very poor, then it might need that uh, you need to replace the print edge. In the edge that is making the impact on the ribbon. Maybe that one has become a uh, bad. You may need to replace it. All right. Now we move on to six steps involved in the uh, troubleshooting and maintenance of printers. Six steps involved in troubleshooting and maintenance of uh, printers. We like we know the troubleshooting process in a computer system or associated devices. We normally follow these six steps. The first step is to identify the problem. What is the problem that the printer is having? And the second step is to Establish a theory of probable cause. What actually causes the problem? You can establish a theory. We we'll call it a theory because there are so there will be so many steps that you listed, and then some will be true, some will not be true, and that's why they, they are called theory. Then step three, you test the theory to determine the cause. You need to determine which one out of the theory listed is actually the cause of the problem. And step four, establish a plan of action to resolve the problem and implement the solution. Now, how do you not want to resolve the problem after you have been able to identify it? That is what we are doing. Step four. Then step five, you need to verify full system functionality and then if applicable, implement preventive measures. You need to actually, after you have fixed the problem, check that the printer is still working fine. Step six, document findings, action, actions and outcomes. First step is to identify the problem, and that includes uh, asking questions. Asking questions. Open-ended questions and close-ended questions from the user of the, the printer. For instance, what problems are you experiencing with your printer? The person will explain, and that is a uh, uh, open-ended question. You explain what happened. Another question can be, what software or hardware has been changed recently on, the, on your computer? The person will explain that. Is an open-ended question. Another one could be, what were you doing when the problem was identified? That is, what were you doing on the printer or on the system or whatever? The person will explain. Then what error message have you received? The person will say, ah, okay, I received so, so, so error message or I didn't receive any error message. Uh, those are open-ended questions. Those are examples of open-ended questions that can be asked from the user to determine what the problem is. Then also, uh, Close-ended questions can be asked. For instance, is the printer under warranty? These are questions that elicit either yes or no answer. All right, it's close-ended question. Another one can be, can you print a test page? If you press the test page, will the printer print yes or no? And that's another close-ended question. Then, another one can be, is this a new printer? Another open-ended uh, close question. Then the last one here, is the printer powered on? That's another simple question that uh, you can answer either yes or no, making it a close-ended uh, question. Now, establish a theory of probable cause. Now, we need to know some, some common printer problems, common printer problems, and some common causes of a printer breakdown. 
It can be loose cable connections. It can be paper jams. Paper jams are very common. It can be equipment power. It can be low ink warning. That this ink is low, especially on the inkjet printers. Mm -hmm. Then it can be out of paper. The device can be out of paper. Mm -hmm. It can also bring errors on equipment display or errors on computer screen. These are various uh, probable cause or problem to a, a printer. Now, we go to step three. Step three is to test the theory to determine the cause of the problem. You test the theory to determine the cause. So, we want to test the theory to determine the cause of the problem. Now, we have listed some uh, probable causes. Yeah. Yeah, you need to test them one by one to determine which one is a. Uh, okay, so we are now going to step three. So, step three has to do with testing the theory to determine the cause. All the possible causes or probable causes that we listed. We need to test them one after the other. For instance, we can restart the printer or scanner to check whether the error will go. You can disconnect and reconnect the cables if you think uh, the cable has an issue. You can restart the computer probably. If you restart the computer, the uh, printer will be you know, detected and uh, it will print. You can check the printer for paper jams. Uh, that is a very common thing uh, because paper jams are very common. Then you can receipt paper in paper trays also. Check the paper in the paper tray. Maybe it's not well seated and then the, uh, the printer cannot detect uh, the paper. Then you can ensure that printer doors are closed. If the printer doors are not, not closed, the printer will not print because it has been you know, designed that way. Then uh, if there is no toner or uh, ink, you need to install a new ink or uh, toner cartridge to get uh, the work done. Now, apart from that, we move on to step four. Okay. Step four. Okay. Step four is uh, establishing a plan of action to resolve the problem and implement the solution. So, how can we resolve the problem after the problem has been identified and the possible uh, reason, probable reason or probable cause where the error has been identified? Now, if you, after carrying out all the previous the checks that we mentioned earlier, and then the problem has not been resolved, then we need to check uh, further information to actually fix the problem. So, uh, if those steps were not working and then the problem still exists, if the problem remains, you need to go further, look for further solutions. And where can we get solutions? You can get solutions from the app desk, repair logs. You can check uh, with other technicians, share the problem with them, let them give you suggestions. You can go to manufacturer's website and check their VAX, the frequently asked questions. And then you check uh, some technical websites uh see possible solution to the problem you can consult news groups consult computer manuals device manuals online forums internet search uh, there are many forums on the internet whereby you can ask the question you can even search it from search engines such as google you can type the question there and then you'll be surprised that many times the answer has been provided in some websites and then the search engine with search engine we help you to locate those answers from various websites. So these are various ways by which uh, you can actually resolve the problem after uh, the step three has been carried out, but the problem still remains. Then after then we move on to step five. Now you have fixed the problem. You must verify full system functionality. Now in the process of fixing the problem, you might have uh, inadvertently caused another error into the structure or working of the device. So you need to test that all errors that might be caused by your repairing or maintenance are cleared. So that is why you need to verify full system functionality and then implement a preventive measures if applicable. 
One, you need to reboot the computer, reboot the printer, reboot the printer, then print a test page from the printer control panel, show that it can print, then print a document using the computer system uh, that is using the application for the printer, then reprint the customer's problem uh, uh, documents. The problem that was, uh, you know, earlier mentioned, reprint that uh, problem uh, document. Then if there is a need, you must implement preventive measures. Inform the owner of certain preventive measures need to be, you know, follow in order to avoid such a problem in the future. And after then, the last step is to document findings, actions, and outcomes. Everything that has been found out, all the processes taken, what parts were changed, you know, what time was it uh, was uh, taking, how long was it uh, does it take to repair the problem? How much does it cost to fix the problem? These are some of the information that needs to be documented. So that is why step six is important. We document findings, actions, and outcomes. Uh, this will be useful in the future. When such problems still arise, probably the same uh, computer or printer or another one, but to have a similar problem. And use this information that have been stored, that have been recorded over the years to help you in fixing problems like that. You need to discuss the solution implemented with the customer. Let the customer verify the problem, that the problem has been uh, cleared, that the problem has been solved. Get, give the device to the customer to test. And also, uh, you need to provide the customer with all paperwork, all the paperwork needed to get their, their device, and document all the steps taken to solve the problem in the work order, in the technician's journal. Document any components used in the repair. Document the time spent to resolve the problem. These are the information needed to be recorded as the last step. The last step looks uh, uh, very trivial, but very, very important. It's not trivial, it's very important. It has to be carried out in order to actually ensure a completeness of the work and also get yourself set uh, for future uh, use. All right. So identify computer problems. There's someone here that is trying to figure out what problem is. Uh, printer problem, rather. Opening the printer at the back and then checking cartridge, ink, uh, ink, ink cartridge, toner cartridge, and so on and so forth. That's uh, someone demonstrating that here. The common problems and solutions for printers. You can see them on the screen. Printer does not print. Application document does not print. Printer cannot be added to, or oh, there is a print a spooler error. Printer jobs are sent to the print queue, but are not printed. Paper jams when printing. The toner is not fusing to the paper. When the paper comes out, and then you rub your hand or the laser jets paper prints, and then the toner just rub off like dust. It has a problem. Another one. The paper is not being fed into the printer. The printer does not pick the paper. It's not taking the paper in so that it can print. Printer is printing blank pages. Our user receives access denied when trying to print or to, when trying to install a printer, access denied. Access denied. That's another problem. Printer is printing unknown characters or does not print a test page. That's another problem. Printer uh, jobs are sent to the print queue, but are not printed. These are common problems uh, with printers. Sometimes the print jobs are faded. Sometimes printer prints uh, on no characters and does not print or does not print anything. Printer queue is functioning properly, but the printer does not print. That's another one. Another one can be user receives a document, a uh, failed print. Document failed, that's the message. Document failed to print. That's the, the error message a user receives. Another one printer is printing incorrect colors. Sometimes printer display, display has no image. So these are some common uh, problems with printers. And then by experience, you will know what solution is required for each of these errors. Then there are advanced uh, problems with printers. For instance, printer prints on new characters. Or a printer will not print large or complex images. Another one, laser jet printers, vertical lines, 
prints vertical lines or streaks on every page. We see some paper, print job from a laser jet. Just draw a line, straight line or plenty lines on the page. Sometimes there could be a problem of toner. Toner is not fusing to the paper. Sometimes paper is, is a creased after printing. You see another one. <laughs> That's another problem. Sometimes printer print, uh, pages show ghost images. Another time, paper is not being fed into the printer. Sometimes each time a printer, a network printer is uh, restarted, user receives the, the message, document failed to print uh, error. Document, document failed to print. Sometimes you can also have the error. There are multiple fake jobs in the printer logs. These are common problems uh, with printers that uh, with experience one should be able to clear. So that is what we learn in this chapter. And then we have uh, some terms and see them on the screen. These are JT, JT, PAX, printer, thermal printer, 3D printer, ADF, print head, ruler, the feeder. Uh, duplexing assembly, main cartridge, carriage beds, imaging drum, toner cartridge, fuser assembly, transfer ruler, pickup rulers, processing, charging, exposing, developing. Transferring, fusing, cleaning, virtual printer, print to file, print to PDF, print to XPS, print to image, cloud printing, plastic filaments, filaments, feeder, alt end nozzle, axis, print bed, print driver, collation, hardware, hardware print server, software print server, dedicated print server, preventive maintenance. These are some of the terms uh, we came across in this uh, chapter. So that's it. We, we have uh, learned a lot on the printers, the characteristics features, and the functionalities of printers, and then how to maintain them. And that's where we are going to stop. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel so that I can know when we post uh, new videos. See you when I post another video.